Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we're going to be discussing 20 Wizarding World Pioneers, ancient witches and wizards with illustrious tales and significant contributions to the wizarding world. From the founders of various wizarding organizations, to spell creators, all the way to the darkest witches and wizards to have inhabited the magical world, this list has it all. Without further ado, let's dive into it. 1. Hengist of Woodcroft Hengist of Woodcroft is primarily known as the founder of the village of Hogsmeade, the only all-wizarding settlement in Britain. Hengist established Hogsmeade as a safe haven for witches and wizards, hoping to create a place where they could live freely without fear of persecution from muggles. The town itself was founded in the 10th or 11th century, around the same time as the founding of Hogwarts, and was produced in response to the muggle persecution of witches and wizards, which was incredibly common during the Middle Ages. 2. Jarleth Hobart It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Well, actually that's up to Jarleth Hobart to decide, as he is the inventor of the spell. Hobart was a 15th century warlock and charm theorist who had always dreamt of being able to levitate objects, himself included. He eventually realized that he'd invented a spell that would lift objects into the air and could cause them to hover for varying lengths of time, depending on their weight and the skill of the spellcaster. On July 16th, 1544, Hobart attempted a public demonstration of his newly created levitation charm. Climbing atop a church, he cast the spell on himself, hovering in midair initially. However, unable to move, he stripped, thinking his clothes hindered him, but fell naked, breaking bones and earning a fine for outrageous silliness. Hobart was embarrassed, but not beaten, and later put on a second demonstration. Upon the announcement of his second attempt, Hobart attracted an even larger crowd than the first, and while he was initially successful in levitating objects, his biggest error came when he attempted to lift the chief warlock's hat, accidentally exposing the chief's bald head by lifting his wig instead. 3. Pioneers of Quidditch Quidditch is, without a doubt, the most popular and well-known sport played by witches and wizards in the entirety of the wizarding world, and in the Harry Potter universe, the game of Quidditch underwent many levels of evolution before becoming what it is today. The first known sighting of Quidditch was by a witch who lived in Quidditch Marsh in the thousands called Gertie Kettle. Gertie recorded being rather bothered by a nearby broomstick game in her diary, describing what is believed to have been a primitive form of Quidditch, including a rudimentary quaffle, bludgers, and goals. The next account of the game didn't come for another hundred years, when a Yorkshire wizard named Goodwin Neen described the game in a letter he wrote to his Norwegian cousin. One of the biggest changes to the game, however, didn't take place until the middle of the 13th century, when the Golden Snitch, then called a Snidget, was eventually added to the game. The first time a Snidget was used in a game of Quidditch was in 1269, when Barbarous Bragg, the chief of the Wizards Council at the time, attended a game in Kent and released one of these birds onto the pitch. For whatever reason, he then told the Quidditch teams that he would give 150 galleons to the player who caught the Snidget first. Then, in 1398, Zacharias Mumps became the first wizard to write down and to record the rules of the game of Quidditch. These rules also included instructions on how and where witches and wizards should play the game, emphasizing the need for caution around muggles. Falco Aesalon Falco Aesalon was a Greek wizard who existed sometime between the years 700 and 480 BC. His claim to fame is that he is the first known Animagus on record. It's unknown if he was the first wizard to discover the process entirely, or if he was just the first one to be recognized in history as being able to transform. His Animagus form is just as his name would suggest, a falcon. Jajamanek The first known wizard across all continents was a wizard by the name of Jajamanek who hailed from Egypt as far back as 2600 BC. There is little to no information available on Jajamanek other than where he was from and the period in which he lived, but I do wonder if Wizardkind went back further than that, or if he was truly the first. 6. Chauncey Aldridge Chauncey Aldridge, who lived from 1342 to 1379, is notable for being the first known victim of dragonpox. He contracted the disease at some point in his life, causing his skin to turn green and to become marked with blemishes. 
Although others had contracted dragonpox before him, Aldridge was the first to die from the disease, as there was no known cure at the time. His status as the first victim brought him fame, and he was later featured on a chocolate frog card. 7. Bridget Wenlock Bridget Wenlock, who lived from 1202 to 1285, was a renowned English witch and arithmancer of the 13th century. She was the first individual to discover and establish the magical properties associated with the number 7. Known for her intense dedication to safeguarding her theorems, Wenlock often recorded her innovative ideas using invisible ink. Her research and insights made her a prominent figure in the field of magical mathematics. Wenlock first scribbled down her groundbreaking theorem on the magical properties of the number 7 at breakfast one day, apparently on the back of an envelope, using her usual invisible ink. She then proceeded to send her cousin a letter, using what she later believed to be the very envelope concealing the theorem. 8. Rexidian Rexidian was a dark wizard who was said to have existed during an unknown period in time. It's only referred to as ancient. He was said to have been very talented and fully immersed in the dark arts, able to produce all sorts of evil concoctions and cast all sorts of sinister spells. But one thing that he always had trouble with was what we now know to be the Patronus charm. According to Harry Potter lore, Rexidian, who was massively magically talented, was simply not able to produce the Patronus charm properly because he was not pure of heart. Where a normal witch or wizard could expect to be introduced to their spirit animal when casting the spell for the first time, Rexidian was met with maggots. Not only that, but they were maggots that devoured him, engulfing his body. This is a testament to just how evil Rexidian was. He wasn't just not pure of heart, Rexidian's heart was black. He was pure evil. 9. Ulick Gamp Ulick Gamp was the original Minister for Magic in the UK. He held office from 1707 to 1718, and was responsible for spearheading the transition from Wizards Council which preceded the ministry to the ministry. Prior to that, he was head of the Wizengamot, and he is famous for founding the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. During his leadership, the ministry took the decisive step of classifying the Cruciatus, Imperius, and Killing Curses as unforgivable and outlawing their use. 10. Merwin the Malicious Merwin the Malicious was an evil pure-blood wizard that existed in the medieval period, sometime between the 5th and 15th centuries. During his lifetime, Merwin was a dedicated practitioner of the dark arts, and would conduct all sorts of twisted magical experiments using his uniquely hooked wand. He had dark grey scabby looking skin, which sort of resembled lifeless human skin, and would often sport a long dark green cloak. He was a scary looking guy, and I have no doubt that the experiments he would conduct had a lasting effect on his physical appearance, as we know how dark magic can affect you in that way. Merwin was single-handedly responsible for creating a lot of the dark spells, jinxes, and hexes derived from the medieval era, and after his death, made it onto a chocolate frog card. 11. Circe Circe was an ancient Greek sorceress that resided on the island of Aeaea. She possessed a fondness for transforming lost sailors into animals, particularly pigs. During Harry Potter's inaugural journey to Hogwarts in 1991, he obtained this particular card from a chocolate frog. There was also a portrait of Circe situated within Hogwarts Castle's premises. This portrait served as a guardian of a concealed shortcut linking the fourth floor landing of the Grand Staircase to the entrance hall side room. 12. Adelbert Waffling Contrary to his last name, Adelbert Waffling was actually quite an insightful wizard. Before he passed away in 1981, Waffling became a world-renowned wizard known for his expertise in magical theory. He is widely recognized as the author of the comprehensive tome All About Magic. Regarded as the father of magical theory, it is widely believed that every contemporary witch and wizard has gained knowledge from studying his writings. Tamper with the deepest mysteries, the source of life, the essence of self, only if prepared for consequences of the most extreme and dangerous kind. 13. Loxius One of the previously known owners of the bloody path of the Elder Wand Loxius was the man who famously gave the Elder Wand the name The Death Stick, by ruthlessly murdering copious amounts of people while using it. Loxius was a truly evil dark wizard that many wanted dead, and according to Dumbledore, many claimed to have been the one to finish him off, even his own mother. This guy was almost as evil as they come. 14. Acrisdus 
Acrestus isn't particularly well known, but he marked his place in wizarding history as a practitioner of the worst kinds of dark arts imaginable. Acrestus was alive during the 15th century, and he is the original inhabitant of the island fortress of Azkaban. While traveling one day, Acrestus stumbled upon the island, which at the time had no infrastructure to speak of. When he first arrived, it was just a regular island, but he soon turned it into his own little dark arts experiment. After placing concealment charms on the island, Acrestus began his dark arts experiments by luring muggle sailors to the island, then torturing and eventually murdering them. Before ever stepping foot on the island, Acrestus was mad, but after spending some time there, he became totally insane as he had completely lost touch with reality. He became so wrapped up and enthralled in his experimentation with dark magic that he had lost his mind, and the poor sailors that he brought to the island witnessed it firsthand. In his madness, it has been speculated that Acrestus either unwittingly or perhaps intentionally created what we now know to be Dementors, which are the most evil creatures in the wizarding world. The most evil creature from the most evil wizard. Makes sense. 15. Wendelin the Weird During the medieval ages, some witches and wizards fell victim to witch hunts, eventually being burned at the stake. But not Wendelin, oh no no. Wendelin the Weird, a peculiar medieval witch from Britain, achieved fame for her extraordinary ability to withstand being burned at the stake. Throughout the 14th century, amidst the height of muggle witch hunts, Wendelin fearlessly allowed herself to be captured and subjected to this brutal fate not just once, but an astounding 47 times, each time donning a different disguise. Driven by her pursuit to indulge in the pleasurable sensation generated by the flame-freezing charm, Wendelin willingly confronted being burned at the stake repeatedly. However, through the adept use of the charm, the fires posed no real danger, and instead provided her with a delightful and gentle tickling experience, one that she relished immensely. 16. Ottoline Gamble Ottoline Gamble, a notable British witch, held the esteemed position of the 14th Minister for Magic in the British Ministry of Magic. Her term spanned from 1827 to 1835, during which she made significant contributions to the wizarding world. Driven by her fascination with muggle technology, Gamble possessed a daring and controversial outlook. Recognizing the need for a discreet mode of transportation for Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, she championed the revolutionary idea of a train. By proposing the use of a train, Minister Gamble successfully solved the long-standing conundrum of safely relocating numerous students without attracting unwanted attention from the non-magical community. This visionary concept ultimately brought the iconic Hogwarts Express into existence, forever changing the way students journeyed to and from Hogwarts. 17. Morgan Le Fay, Morgana Morgana Le Fay was a dark witch from medieval times, renowned for her antagonistic relationship with the legendary wizard Merlin and her association as the half-sister of King Arthur. Born and residing in the Middle Ages, Morgana Le Fay was an influential figure, boasting formidable magical abilities and profound healing talents. Notably, she possessed the ability to transform into an animagus, assuming the form of a bird. Later in life, Morgana ascended to the position of queen on the island of Avalon, a role she fulfilled with authority. However, her path eventually veered towards the dark arts, and she evolved into a skilled practitioner of dark magic, thereby becoming a formidable adversary of the esteemed wizard Merlin. Morgana is widely considered to be the most powerful dark witch of all time. 18. Kleena One of the first known members of wizardkind to exist in Europe was a witch by the name of Kleena, who presided there sometime in the Middle Ages. Kleena was a powerful druidess, and her abilities were vast, including, of course, the ability to transform. Her main animagus form was that of a seabird, the same as Morgana, but it has also been expressed that her unparalleled skill in transfiguration allowed her to turn herself into things like waves. And always traveling along with Kleena were three magical birds that could cure the sick by singing them to sleep. 19. Elidora Ketteridge Elidora Ketteridge, who lived from 1656 to 1729, achieved the remarkable feat of being the first witch to stumble upon the magical properties of Gillyweed. In an unexpected turn of events, she inadvertently consumed the plant and found herself in great peril, facing a near suffocating ordeal. However, she swiftly rescued herself from danger by immersing her head into a bucket of water. 
20. Andros the Invincible Ever wondered about the limits of the Patronus charm? Well, Andros the Invincible put this to the test. Andros, an esteemed wizard of ancient Greece, gained widespread acclaim for his extraordinary feat of summoning a Patronus of unprecedented size. It is said that his Patronus reached immense proportions, surpassing any recorded in wizarding history, comparable in magnitude to a giant. Born in Greece during the Classical Antiquity period, Andros exhibited exceptional magical abilities which led to him being bestowed with the moniker The Invincible, a testament to his unmatched skill and power. And that's it for this video. Which of these witches and wizards had you heard of? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out extra content on my second channel, Harry Potter Theory Extra, as well as audio only content on Spotify. Until next time, remember it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.